ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, back once again with another episode of the King's Court. I'm George Brown, your host. Got my co-host, Mandis Buckle. Mandis, how you doing? I'm good, George. I'm fired up, man. I'm fired up. It's the heart of the season. We're getting down to the nitty gritty. There's only a couple of shows left. Woo-hoo, I'm amped. Yeah, man, you've been all over the place, man. All over. Well, we we were just together in Vegas last weekend, and uh, we got to see Battle in the Desert, Spectrum Productions, fantastic show. George, let's kick it off there. What did we see, man? Well, uh, we seen some uh, some good competition, man. Uh, we seen the King come back. Uh, it was a pretty solid lineup, and uh, you know, he to me, he came in looking, you know, the best he's ever looked. You know, um, we were wondering, you know, how he was going to show up. Um, and, you know, I don't, I don't think he disappointed. He, he, uh, he made improvements and he was able to get the win. Um, the rest of the field was, was pretty solid, man. Um, some younger guys, you know, you know how you, you always say some up and coming guys or whatever. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it was, it was his show hands down. It was, it was, it was Supreme Akeem show hands down. But, uh, you know, interesting, you know, I didn't get a chance to see him all that much last year. Bits and pieces here, here and there. So I'm going to take your word for it that that this was the best version of Akeem that, that we've ever seen. Um, Bawan from Canada, who, who was second, I was impressed. This is a young guy, very humble, got a real pretty physique, good looking dude. Uh, I think we're going to see big things to come out of him. Um, He's searching for knowledge and information. He wants to battle. Uh, we saw Aria, seasoned veteran, uh, getting some more points. I think Aria stamped his ticket. Um, I want to say he's at 17 points now. Hopefully he's done for the year. He, he should be qualified. Um, it was a great show. It was a great show, but it was the Akeem show. With, with yeah. yeah, definitely, man. Um, and then he followed that up with uh, the Chicago show. Yeah. Well, at the same weekend at Battle in the Desert, uh, we had San Jose. You had San Jose the same weekend. Um, Ant Wood got the W out there. Yeah, Ant Wood has got it. Yep. Yeah. Ant Woods was number one. Uh, I believe Jamanji finished second. He got some more points. And uh, Dean, Dean ended up third. So uh, I believe that puts Ant Wood at 13. Which now just puts him into the qualification as of right now. Uh, Jamont, I believe, should be at 15 then. And and Dean is at 18. He should be safe no matter what. Jomanji is currently in the top 20. Uh, is 15 going to be safe? I, I don't know. I don't know. So you might see him do another show or he might rest. Uh, yeah. But two good shows, both out on the West Coast. Um, it, it seems like you've got that middle tier of guys, uh, the Deans, the Joe Manji, the Ant Woods, the Arias, Bowan. You've got these guys now battling for those final spots. So it's going to be really interesting here. Um, so let's get right into the points to qualify for the O, because that, this is that time of year. Um, right now, the, 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 the bottom, the last guy to qualify is at 12. You've got, uh, you've got big Collie Cordy, uh, out of Houston. And, uh, there, there's one other guy. I, I can't remember his name. I apologize. You know who you are out there. Go ahead and message us, uh, call in if you want. It's a segment we might start taking on guys. Maybe we'll let you guys call in something hot. You hear what we're yeah. talking about? Might start taking phone call, maybe two calls a show. I, I don't know. Um, but right now the cutoff is at 12. Both of those two guys are the last to to qualify. Um, but with this race to the points, George, you've got Virginia this weekend, you've got Vancouver this weekend. Virginia's a tier four, so it's eight, four, three, two, one. Vancouver's a tier three, it's twelve, six, five, four, three. And then you got the big one, the last show to qualify, Tampa. Tampa. Tier two, 16, 8, 7, 6, 5. So 
there's a lot of points up for grabs with these last three shows. 15 spots. Um, anything could happen here. That's why I don't yeah. know 15 is safe. I don't know. I don't know if I'd be sitting around at 15. What do you think? Well, I mean, you got to think. Let's just say, hypothetically, someone who just is doing the Tampa show comes in and wins and get those 16 points. They're bumping a lot of people out. So one like guy, said, one guy. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just it's it, 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 even though it's close and it's a tight race, it can still go, you know, a lot of different ways, you know, depending on, you know, a guy who's just been placing, 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 placing. He could be right there on the cusp. But like I said, if somebody come out of nowhere, like a king, for example, you know, he had zero points and then he just did two shows. He got 20 points. Now he knocked somebody. He knocked a whole line of guys who were right there on the cusp right out. You know, so, you know, if it's somebody else like that. Or if it's just another person who might just be hitting on all cylinders, who knows? You know, right. because at this point, it is a lot of guys that we don't know, you know? And yeah. so it's a, it's kind of a toss-up still, like for the Vancouver show. Or uh, what's the other show that's coming? Uh, uh, you got Virginia, oh, Virginia for this weekend. Yeah, these are like almost toss-up shows because it's like, yes, you, you do have some guys, some names in there. But there's not a lot of consistency on that main person who you can expect to get the points. So... You know, if you are still out there running, in my opinion, you know, I would be shooting for the stars because you never know. Yeah, it, it, it looks like there, there's a group of about 10 guys that are anywhere from 7 to 11 points. That's the group that needs to be battling, fighting, that could bump the guys that are at 12, 13, 14, 15 points. So if those guys sit out, chances are they're going to get bumped by some of that group. I'll give you an example. Brian Lloyd has got 11 points. He's going up to do Vancouver. If he finishes second, third, or fourth, that bumps out Polly yes. Corp or the other guy at, 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 at 20. He's now, that would, that would put a guy like that with 11 points safe with, with 16, 17, 15 points. So there is definitely a strategy here to be played. Uh, some guys are sitting out. We already seen the lineups for this weekend. That leaves one show. George, sure. I certainly would not want to be going into the Tampa Pro having to finish in the top five because that's going to be just a flat-out dog fight. Yeah. Yeah. At the same time, you got to do what you got to do, man. If it's a dog fight and that's where you are, you know, you got to fight. You know, that's what that is what makes you as your career, you know, goes, you know. So if you are right there fighting for that spot, no matter what, you know, you need to do what you need to do to get that, you know. And then from that, you know, as you continue to move on, you learn from it, you know, because there's something to be learned in every aspect of, you know, getting the points. You know? Yeah. Um, now, um, now, George, you know. We, we were going to have a special guest on here next, but as we're talking, I think we go right into our next topic here. It's rest versus run. Okay. You know, we're talking about it right now. Where's the advantage to rest versus to run? Well, in my experience, uh, it's, a, it's a medium to me. I, I've seen through the data that, that the person who normally rests, like this, say the Arnold winner, never wins Olympia. That's just the way it is. So I don't know if for whatever reason, it's the combination of getting your rest, but then still making sure, you know, you got your car out on the track. I think I found a sweet spot in, in how I do, you know, which is, you know, in my first couple of years, I would do like major, major, major. I would cut off at New York Pro to get that rest to try to come in um, for Olympia. But with New York Pro, that's kind of a, a later in the season, you know. So you really didn't get that much rest to just get your mind right, be able to eat some food or whatever it is that you do. So I found a way to do a show, um, get in points earlier in the season, but get some points at the end of the season, you know, after the Olympia to kind of give myself a cushion. So... When I come into the season, I maybe had to do two or three shows, and then I can get an extended break 
to be ready mentally, physically for a prep. So like now, last couple of years, I've been looking forward to, you know, a, a prepper for the Olympia as whereas before I might have, you know, I, I might have looked good and everything like that. But it was like, you know, I'm burning everything in the tank because I really didn't get the rest of it, you know. So for me, once again, like everything else, it's just kind of finding what works for you. So I think, yes, you do need rest. But I also think that, you know, you get rust if you don't get out there and run. Totally disagree. I think you if you're good enough and you solidified yourself, I think you rest and and you go you go to work, you're still in the gym, you're still eating clean, you're doing the business of bodybuilding and then you've got a nice full long whether you do 16, 18, 20 week prep going into that Olympia uh and you're ready to go, you're fresh, you've put money in your pocket, you've traveled You've had no stress. Your receptors are fresh and clean. You go into that show knocking it out. Look, we're seeing it right now with, with the current champ, Brandon Hendrickson. This is the best he's ever looked, and he hasn't even really fully stepped on the gas pedal 100%. He looks like he's about four weeks out, and he's got all the time in the world. It'll be interesting to see what Ryan Terry looks like. Um, but not everybody is afforded that benefit. I think then the flip side of that coin is if you're confident enough in yourself, uh, you can do a late run and then you can build momentum into the Olympia. But a late run means you got to know that you're good at something, something similar to like what Akeem just did. Or if someone waited even later and said, hey, I'm going to do Vancouver and I'm going to do Tampa and I know I'm going to have enough points and ride into the Olympia. Now, that's ballsy. But again, if you think you're that good and you've worked on the details that you needed to and you, and you feel you can go in and handle the business, I think that's the approach. I think the guys who have to run, run, run are the guys who are still trying to move themselves up the ranks. They can't afford taking that chance. They need to be sure they have enough points. Because if you were counting on winning Vancouver or winning Tampa, and all of a sudden Nakeem Scott shows up, your Olympia hopes are, are blown out of the water. Your year is ruined. You mm -hmm. know. Um, so I think you absolutely rest when you can if you're if you're a top top line guy. And the rest of you gotta gotta run. Until until you're established, you know, because you need the points at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what your strategy is. If you can't get there, you have to make it to the Olympia. True. True. I get, that. I get that. But but, you know, I guess you would gear it for uh, a guy who could make the choice, you know, right. whether should I should I rest or should I. And also part of my thing is I feel like, you know, um, you should. You, you got to get out there, you know, like out of sight, out of mind. But well, you know? why? Why know, does that matter? Why does that matter? Uh, I mean, you know, just it's just my opinion. You know, I feel like, you know, you show face or whatever. If you're that good, you should be able to we should be able to see you instead of just once a year. So just say, for example, you know, that person does uh, Olympia like you get because we've had an Olympic winner who doesn't do any shows. Right. You're not. Supposed just, to. Huh? You're not supposed to. Has so you Phil just, Heath compete once Phil Heath won the Olympia, did he ever compete in any other show? I mean, that's just it. That's his choice. But when, once Jay Cutler won the Olympia, did he compete in any other show? Uh, yeah, I mean, no, they didn't. But once I mean, you're Mr. Uh, Olympia, there's no reason to compete in any other show. You save your body, you rest yourself, you tour the country or the world to do what you need to. You make your money, you represent the sport, and you go back, you defend your Olympia title. Why do you have to go and do another show? You're the champion. Okay, so why? So that's that's like saying, but but Brandon did shows after he won Olympia. Why? But because that was already predetermined prior to winning the Olympia. We already had that all mapped out, and that was to build his brand. That was but post Olympia. It, but still, it's needed. You still want to? That's that's my point. Like he'll you still never wanna... do it again. If he wins the Olympia, he'll never do it again. There's so no need. Just do, so you just, just do one Olympia. show. One show. You're you're the I chance. Just, I just I just I get that. I understand that. I get I, it. I, I just feel like 
you know, like, you know, you want to, you want to be, you want to be seen. That's just me. It's just like, if I can only see LeBron in the championship, you know, I don't see him during the regular season at all. Just because I just feel like, you know, I'm not saying do a hundred million shows, right? you know, do the majors, do it. Do, if you win Olympia, do the Arnold. Well, here, George. So we've seen now, if we're going to use the NBA as an example, we yeah. saw what Toronto did with Leonard. He only played 65 games. True, they true. rested him over 20 yes. games. What it showed, it proved that yeah. it helps physically when it comes to the rigors of the NBA playoff yeah, yeah. and yeah. into the championship. He was the freshest guy on the court at the biggest moments. It's proving that some rest is necessary. True. So true. I, I believe I believe when you get to that point, you absolutely rest. The rest of yeah. them have to. You got to make a name for yourself. That's true. when you're in the hustle and the bustle and the grind. True, 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 so, true. All right. Well, look, man, uh, we got to take a short break. We'll have our guest come back. It's a game, a king, Scott. He's fresh yeah, off the winning two shows. Yeah, you got a king supreme. supreme. <laughs> a king supreme, fresh off the of winning two shows. Wow. And uh, he's got to be feeling good. He's definitely good on the points list. He's in for Olympia. He's calling me. He's talking shit. So, you know, we'll be right back with him. You guys stay tuned. And we are back with our guest, Akeem Supreme. Show sure. up two sure. wins. Let's get it. He won the Battle of the Desert, and mm -hmm. he won the most recent show, which is the Chicago Pro. Let's How you it. feeling, man? I'm feeling good, man. You know, it's great to, you know, come out there with a win. You know, it was a lot of good guys there, but, you know, pulled off another win. So that was great. Happy about right. it. Let's, let's recap Chicago. Man, if she was there, man, what'd you see? Uh... I saw I saw a guy who came out and uh, had superior structure. Um, he was a little flat in prejudging, so it was close. Um, came back at night, blew the doors off everybody. Um, he was he was winning after prejudging. Don't get me wrong, but he was flat enough to where it made it somewhat close. When he came back at night, it was ones across the board. It was Akeem Supreme, and second was, like, here. And so it was a battle for two, three, and four. Uh, that's what I saw. Okay. Uh, you know, on the on – the, uh, I, I was at home watching it, and uh, I, I kind of got the same thing, man. Um, I felt like, you know, once I watched the video – you know, once they moved him over and they all posed up, you know, it was it was over with. You know what I mean? The right. shape, um, he posed great, you know, and it's just a new look that came to me, you know, because he has a, a sleeker look, you know. A little bit flat, but that's just playing around with stuff, you know, but right. it, it was his hands down. Uh, second place looked good. Uh, I believe that was... Um, Brant. Brant. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Third was uh, Derek Stevenson, swag. Definitely got to say his name, man. Um, he put together a nice, nice package. Um, who's the fourth or fifth? Sorry, we got the list. Uh, uh, Kali Cordy was fifth. You know, it, this is what's interesting. You know, you have a guy like Brant who's a veteran. I, I want to say he's 40 or 41. Okay. So he's an older guy, but with an old guy like that who's got hard, dense muscle, if Great. you guys were really good, if you're a little bit on the flat side, you can be exposed by a guy who has old, hard, dense muscle because they just look harder, they're fuller, bigger. Once you make a small adjustment, that's it. Those guys are done, you know. But yeah. shout out, congrats to him. He did his job. He can't, I mean, second for a dude like that, that that's a great showing. Yeah. Same thing with Stevenson, who took third. We've seen yeah. him in first call outs at a couple other shows. He's got a complete physique, but he's he's maybe – what is he, 5'4"? Uh, no, he's, not, he's, a little, he's a little taller than that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, okay. He's 5'5", five, five with, with, <laughs> with heels on. Um, yeah. And so he's got a complete physique, but when you have a guy that's that small standing next to the stature of Akeem, yeah, it's going to get lost in the shuffle. Um, right. But again, a great look by him. 
yes, third definitely. place in the Chicago Pro yeah. with what I believe is going to be a top five Olympian this year in Akeem. That's a great showing. That's a great yeah. showing. Stand next yeah, to let's let's get into Akeem, man. Um, Akeem, you know, you took a, a, a different route this year than you did last year. Um, you know, you did a lot of shows last year, and you know, you showed up at Olympia top ten placing, and then you come in this year, and you were kind of like just a, a, a ghost, and then you just boom show up, and you know, like I said, that was two of the best packages that I've seen you with. Tell us a little bit about you know the the journey from the Olympia to where you are right now. Um, the journey, I'm, I mean, I told you I uh, switched coast, um, so I'm living now in California, so that was a big change. And really just trying to get things together over there, you know. Um, it's, it's, I came out here alone. Um, I made things happen, you know, trying to get things right, you know, trying to get a job, different situation. I came out here with just, like, a certain amount of money in my pocket, and I was just like, you know what? I, I said I wanted to do it. I didn't want to have no fear towards it. I just said, yo, whatever happens, happens, go out there. And, you know, just try something different, you know. Um, it was a journey. I, I wanted to be on that stage so bad, you know, and just to miss New York Pro. That shit hurt me, you know. It hurt my heart, you know, just to see that, you know, I wanted to be on that stage with those guys, you know. And that's I still feel like that's still my city, you know. I feel like no matter what, I still got to go back to New York and I got to win it. You know, I got second place last year, but to not come home with the win, you know, you know, it's a journey. And I'm like, I'm going to push for it next year if, if possible. You know, you never know what circumstance happens, but. That's something I have to have that first place in, in my city. And, um, you know, but I was able to, you know, pull it out this year, you know, just getting something in. And I, I told myself I have to be on that stage and knowing that we're going to be on the biggest stage ever. Um, come on, man. That's that's one of the dreams. You know, I went last year. You know, we only get that, you know, that venue, you know, um, is that, you know, we, we get the small stage. But now we get to be on a big stage. I have to be there. I can't let that go by. So I, I pulled whatever I had to do to, to get there. It happened, and um, I'm grateful to be here, you know, because it could have been me just sitting out and me just watching y'all get on the stage. But for me to pull it off, back-to-back -back wins, and really to get back on that stage, uh, man, it's unreal right now. You know, it it, it says a lot about you to, to go through the move. Like you said, you, you changed coasts. You didn't move from one state to another. You went... You went straight across the country. You changed jobs. You waited till later in the year, and you still showed up, and you walked away with two Ws. I don't want to say easily because you, you, a yeah, win is hard. Was easy. Those guys are coming in. They coming right. in. Yeah, they work. Right. Out. But you were you were a dominant winner. You know, it, it was a it was a hands down. This is the best guy on the stage. They gave other people a look, but at the end of the day, they, they couldn't they couldn't stand next to you. Uh, that speaks volumes about you to be able to mentally come in and do that. Was it tough being did, did you have stuff going on in your mind saying, oh, man, what if were you trying oh, you know were you you worried, to or, or did you just have that supreme confidence that this is your job? This is what you're going to do. Um, I tell people all the time, I mean, it, obviously your mind play the game. You always like, you know, I could be tighter here. You could be working over here. And I continuously just kept on posing, doing what I do. And I just know that, you know, being continuously doing what you said you want to do is going to put you in that space in mind of saying like, yo, they're not going to work harder than me. And I mean, that mindset has always been in my head. It, it, it transferred over from calisthenics. I always wanted to be the best. I always tell myself, if you want to be the best, you got to put the most work in. So I, I made sure that I had a night job. It was tough, you know, time scheduling and then, you know, dealing with, you know, still having family on the East Coast. So they calling me like, all right, five o'clock in the morning, I'm going to sleep at that time. Yeah. So I made sure, you know, I'm going to, I'm working out, I do my job. And then when outside of, I'm going to the gym four o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, right after work. And I get it done. So I made no excuses about it. I knew uh, what I wanted to do. I cut off whatever I had to do. And I made that a priority. I, I had friends that I wanted to go out, hang out with. But, you know, at the end of the day, I told her, this is my goal. This is what I'm here for. This is what I, I was chosen to do. So I told myself, you know, put the work in. And at the end of the day, whatever happened at the end of the situation, I know I couldn't put no more work in. I, I was done. I was yeah. toast. I was on a treadmill almost ready to, like, yo, I was, I, was, I was going through it. So for me to know that I put all that work in and, and it came out for me to win, it was just, you know, a great feeling. 
you know? Yeah, it showed, man. Um, and you talk about, you know, your calisthenics background, you know, and I, like I said, I, I might make jokes or whatever. I can't do it. Yeah. Like, to me, I think you wanted to, you know, one of the best at that, you know, as well. But taking that and switching it over uh, to bodybuilding and a different training style, maybe, um, you know, you always talk about hard work, but sometimes you got to work smart. Um, yeah. What have you done? Uh, as far as like, you know, your, your strategies, like, you know, who, who you working with as far as a coach, how has that changed, uh, you know, your, your look, because you have a different look, you know, certain things that, you know, I used to like crack jokes with you about, I, like I told you, yo, I can't say that, you know, so like, tell us a little bit about that, you know, um, just got collecting data from last year. And then, you know, like I said, still using calisthenics background, but then like actually working smarter, because obviously whatever you're doing is working. Um, just, just diff doing different things and, and just realizing what works for my body, you know, trying to eat different foods and playing around with, um, cardio, you know, playing around with, cause I, I never really counted calories. I've noticed that's been the biggest staple in my, my new training and, um, just doing more consciousness about what foods and learning. Every time I eat something different, I look at how my body changes. I like to look at how, um, what food does what? And then I, I look to see what happens. I mean, it's been the most, I take the most pictures now just to see what foods do to my body. And it just, I right. feel like that's been the most gratifying thing to see. It's just to see what what works with your body. I never did that before. I used to just, whatever, it don't matter. It really does matter. Just to see what foods work with your body and what doesn't, you know? And then me going back and forth, you know, with me, me and Manda, see, we, we talk often a little bit more than I, I feel like, you know, in this, this season, we, we talk about strategy. We talk about different things and just understanding, you know, what works and what doesn't, you know, and to be the controller of your own destiny, I feel like in this, in a sense, I feel like, you know, um, to, to see where your body goes and see how you know how it goes and how it works for you and not allowing somebody to be, you know, you know, you got to figure it out. I feel like your body is your body. You, everybody's different and everybody needs to know how, their body works. And I feel like now I've been learning how it works and looking at what food puts the best thing for me and, and seeing how it goes. And it, it's still a learning process. I'm still learning. I'm still going. And we're still trying to make things happen. So, George, uh, I, I got a, a, an interesting story. So it was uh, Friday night before the Chicago Pro. <laughs> and <laughs> and King, maybe you want to tell the story. <laughs> oh, so um, I mean, like, like it's, it's a journey in this, and um, one of the things that um, in Chicago, I felt like I was holding a little bit of water after that plane ride, and I don't know why, but at the middle of the night, I'm just like, yo, why my body looks like it's changing? And man, I was like, yo, you need a, you need a burger. I'm like, you need a burger. He like, yeah, you need a burger now. I'm like, I don't know. I'm, I'm like, I'm conscious. I haven't like played around with burgers. I haven't been playing around with eating bad food or. Things where that, that wasn't a, on the menu. It wasn't on the list. So I wasn't yeah. playing around with it. And it was completely different from my, you know, um, what is it? Um, my, show, my first show, I was tight. Yeah. I'm like, you I thinking, you thinking I'm holding water. Why the hell am I? Yeah. Working? Why the hell am I? It's not working yeah. the same. So every show is obviously different, you know? He was like, no, get a burger. We need fries. So we look in. It was 4th of July. We look in. We went to like maybe five different restaurants. He like, no, nah, we got to get you a burger. And then we finally got to, uh, what was it, Wendy's? When and he was like, yo, so, we're going to get a burger. The guy was yeah. like, yo, we shut down. We, we ain't open it for nobody. I'm the only one here. I'm like, wow. Oh. He like, yo, my man, we need a burger. And he, he gave this man, the, the I forgot what story he gave him. He was like, we need this burger. I'll give you a little extra tip. He like, man, yeah. I really want to just go home. He's like, man, I got you. He's like, all right, come around. So he come around. He like, man, I'm, we closed. He like, yo, I got an extra little chain for you. But you had to circle around the block because I think there's another person behind us. So we circling. He like, all right, we got you. So you throw a little extra fries in there, we got you. So he got him. And uh, we circled back. And then he was like, yeah, yeah. He was so hyped just to give us some food. And I mean, I think Mendes gave him like an extra $10. I mean, yeah. the smile on his face was just the $10. And like, just yeah. coming in through with the clutch with Mendes to help me with that was just like, that was that was great. That was a great yeah. feeling. It was needed, like, man. Double it, burger. It, it was. He it was, was like it was fries. midnight. I, I, I ate all that shit. Everything was closed. Yeah. And that George. shit is it was different. Everything tightened up. I was I was looking like, you know, 
I was looking better. All the yeah. water came in, I would pose, and then, you know, it, it came out to be a win. So I was, I was yeah. grateful for that, you know, because sometimes, you know, what's a part of the plan is not always what the plan needs to be. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. tweaking, you know, your, your diet. Because I was, I, when I'm sticking to my schedule, I don't play. Like, I don't go yeah. away yeah. from it. And I noticed what foods work, but I didn't play around with the greasy food. You know, I don't, yeah. I don't mess around with it. I'll, I'll stick to the plan. So when he told me that, I'm like, what do you mean? And just to have trust in him, and he was like, yo, just go for it. I mean, at the end of the day, sometimes that shot in the dark could be the, the shot that makes the win. So yeah. it was a great feeling, and it turned out to be great. And we got home with the win. So that was fun. It, it's one of those things that he's talking about. He's still learning his body. And, and Akeem, mm -hmm. you, you know, like, like every athlete in this sport, as you learn your body, there's a lot of variables. For instance, what worked the week before in Battle in the Desert, it was your first mm -hmm. show. But then you had back-to-back -back weeks. Your metabolism speeds up. You're flying across the country. You're holding yeah, the water holes, definitely. Right. So there's other variables that you can't always account for. One plus one does not equal two. If one plus one equal two in our sport, everyone could just read a book, eat the right things, and look fantastic. But that's not how it works. So within the confines of what you're supposed to do, you also have to make adjustments and gauge for where you currently are. It, let me ask you this. You, you know, the, the, your calisthenic, you, you're an athlete. Yeah. You're an athlete. You know, your calisthenics background. I've seen some videos of what you, I, I can't believe. It. I seen you punching the ground. You, man, man, I don't. Hell, so it's just a, it's a calisthenics thing, man. Oh, my it's God. Just, don't break your wrist. Don't break your wrist. Don't break your wrist. Don't break. We got an Olympia to go to. Don't yeah. break. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm so conditioned for that. I was doing that for years, man. But, I mean, I don't do it too often anymore because I'm so much more focused on, you know, obviously slowing it down and trying not to burn too much calories and try to put in more calories now. But definitely, you know, that's that's my background. I, that's what I did. I mean, I'm, that's what I'm known for for so many years. I've done that for 10 plus years, you know, just calisthenics every day, you know, eating three times a day. So if you go back, like I always had this type of structure. I just didn't know what direction I wanted to go in. It. And it's just that was my sport. You know, we all came out there. There's a whole community of people who do that. And you would be surprised that it, it got so much, you know, competitions and workouts and routines and guys just really just going out there just for the love of the game. I mean, we did it for trophies, but you know, I yeah. did it. I didn't even want the trophy at the end of the day. I just did it for the, you know, the brotherly, you know, connection. You know, we look, got so look. many guys that basically, you know, push themselves in that that limit. So that mentality just transferred over to bodybuilding. So it was a just a little scheme and a little a little show sometimes a little bit of what I used to do. So So still. look, Vegas Saturday night. It's for the trophy, man, but it's for it's for the money too, man. Okay. I have my money. I mean, you still owe me. Make I mean, sure you I, got my I, money. I got man. you last time, so you, you, you better sure be on you it got too, my bro. Money. That's all I'm saying. That's now, what I'm saying. Whatever you want to do with it, man. Nah, nah, listen, up? listen, though. <laughs> I, I'm glad you made it, man. Like I said, I love your competitiveness. You know what I mean? Like that's what Definitely. I always. We're gonna drive up each other. Let's get it. Yeah, you never uh, you never back down. You always up for the challenge, and you know you, you walk it like you talk it, man. So I, I respect it, you know. Um, definitely gonna be fun, like you said. It's gonna be a historic night, you know. So I'm glad you're gonna be there, man. Definitely. Appreciate appreciate having you on, man. And uh, you make sure when they call you, you know, you make sure you tell them where you're from, because I heard from Los Angeles, California, <laughs> <from> King <laughs> Scott, and I was like, huh? You King, you you from LA now? I ain't know that. I thought you was from New York. So you make sure you know you tell who Bob from sure you whoever you're talking about. <laughs> Man, you know, they got to get that right, don't they? Because, look, they ain't saying I'm from wherever. I'm from Columbus. You know, mm. Man is from Chicago. All day long to the day they I gotta see. They, they got to send your car to address. I'm, I'm I'm currently right now in Long Beach, so they have oh, to send okay. it to your address. So nah, see, we're going to have to. Nah, nah we're going to have to make sure. I don't mm. care where I move. Okay. I'm okay. from Columbus. Okay. You know That's the difference between me and you, though. You know, yeah, well, yeah. I, I ain't know how it goes, but at the day, I wanted them to send me the cards so I can yeah, go to yeah. the shows. I don't care what address it is. I am who I am. You're going to hear it, and you're going to see it how, how, how I do my thing. It's going to be from New York. It, it, it can't be from nowhere else. So it's going to be what it is, man. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I right, think man. Like I said, appreciate having you, though, man. Better having this guy in it. I think he brings a whole nother level of excitement and competitiveness. 
and a whole nother structure that this first call out at the Olympia on a Saturday night stage is going to be historic. And however many, whether it's five, six, or seven, this is going to be by far, by far, the best first call out lineup men's physique division has ever seen, hands down. Cannot wait. Cannot Ooh, wait. It's going to be fun, man. We're going to have a go, time, man. Wow. We're going to have best a time. Best we've ever seen. Can't I'm wait. Get your tickets, guys. If you have not Get gotten tickets, tickets Get, oh, yeah, my family going to be there this time. This is going to be different. Oh, it's wow. going to be real different. Yeah. My family said they going to come out. Watch King's Court prior. We told you about tickets. There will be a contest going on that you will see. Go to the Maximum Muscle Report Instagram. There will be rules and directions on how to. You ready? Two free tickets. Maximum Muscle Report. Two free tickets to the Olympia this weekend. You heard it here first. Go on to the Instagram, follow the directions, win your trip. For those of you guys who don't win, we hope to see you there. This is going to be the best Olympia ever. Buy your tickets. Come on out. Support your man. Akeem, we can't wait to see you, man. Yeah. Oh, you should add something. You can see us before we actually get on stage. I'll show you a picture of me. Oh, you can come into our room. And you can check me out before we get on stage. So you can see what's up. All right? We're going to add that to the sauce. You hear? I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> hey, hey. Another great episode, man. King's Court with myself, Akeem Scott. Let's go. Uh, Mandis, you know, all that chicken. You know, Word. long live the king. Long live the king. See you guys next time. Right. Stay dangerous.